Cruise Trends, a look back at 2022 and what's coming down the pike for 2023. Stay tuned. My special guest today is Larry Jackson of Cruise Holidays of Vieira, located in Melbourne, Florida. Together with his lovely wife, Linda, they've been serving the needs of satisfied clients in and around Florida and across the country for the last 20 plus years. Hi, Larry. Welcome to RTE Travel Talk. Thanks, Ken. It's great to be back with you. Great to see you again, Larry. And it, it's my favorite time of year where we are wrapping up the year and starting to look ahead to 2023. And I was just wondering how your year went and what kind of trends we're looking forward to seeing in the cruise industry for 23. Be happy to, Ken. Um, that people are coming into us saying, I've never used a travel advisor before, but I figure I better get one this time. And then when you tell them it doesn't cost you any more, then they're really delighted. So we have converted <laughs> a lot of people. <laughs> so that's that's what's happened. That's a trend that we're seeing. So what are we looking forward to for next year, Larry? Do, do we have any new emerging trends? See? Well, I'll tell you one really big trend is Alaska. Uh, it's, oh, really? Uh, oh, wow. It is huge. And curiously enough, Ken, the uh, fares are not going crazy. They're, they're staying very, very reasonable. Uh, however, things are booking up very rapidly. So uh, Alaska's hot, uh, is uh, basically it. So if you're thinking about doing something in 2023, I'm really urging people to call right away, get booked right away. Um, wow. And okay. Because we're seeing everything filling up. Um, we're going to have more ships than we've ever had in Alaska. We're going to have more berths available. Vancouver's going to have a boom year. I can guarantee you that. Uh, Alaska is a huge trend right now. Uh, the other trend we're seeing is that we're seeing more family vacations. We're seeing more family cruises, multi-generational uh, booking for for our domestic market for the Caribbean. That That's a trend we're seeing. And people don't seem to want to go to Europe. Americans are a little hesitant to, to go. So uh, pricing over there is continuing and availability is really, really good for Europe next year. And as far as destinations, that's, that's kind of what we're seeing. One of the things also, can I can tell you on the, when you're booking for next year, because so many people had future cruise credits, right? There are very, very few suites available. Very, uh, even anything much above a balcony cabin is pretty much sold out for 2023, which is an interesting trend. So selection is kind of limited. So if you're thinking about it, you really need to, to get on it. That's the Caribbean because again, people are using these future cruise credits. Now what that is causing people to do is to suddenly start looking at the luxury cruise lines because those, those suite, you know, most like Silver Sea, the, the smallest cabin on there is bigger than most of the suites on, on Royal Caribbean. So a lot of people are, are starting to book into the luxury and group. That's something that, that we've noticed here at RTE that that's that's becoming a trend that people are looking to take the next step up and do that bucket list vacation or that yeah. bucket list cruise. So they're going luxury. Absolutely. Are you seeing that? Oh, big time, Ken. And and what they're discovering, which is I, all of us have been saying for years and years, is there's not that big a price differential when you factor in everything that you're getting on a luxury cruise. And, and you and I have spent a lot of time talking about Silver Sea and especially their Alaska product. Right. And other people are really aware about this new door-to-door -door pricing that they, that they have. They're going to pick you up at your front door, take you to Alaska for seven days and bring you back to your front door. And the price they're going to charge you is includes everything that happens between the time you left and the time you got back. I think that's a that's a really wise strategy because one thing that that we've heard is people are tired of getting nickel and dimed like you're paying you're paying a decent dollar, you know, to go on one of these cruises and you don't want to come on board and all of a sudden, you know, they've got their hand out for, well, you need to pay extra for this or you need to pay right. extra for that. People want it all in one package. Absolutely. So for Silver Sea, that, I mean, it includes a limo that's going to take you to the airport. It includes your air, your excursions, your gratuities, of course, all your beverages, even a train uh, transfer from Seward to Anchorage, a pre-cruise hotel. And when you put all of those pricings together in Silver Sea, Regent, Sea, Born, they're all very competitive. And, and that's the other trend we're seeing is people don't want to be on the larger ships. You, know, you can get a similar type of an experience on Norwegian cruise lines in the Haven or even on Celebrity in the Retreat, but yeah. you're still on a big ship. And you still got several thousand people to contend with. And yeah. so that's where Silver Sea, Seaborn, and Region are coming in. 600 to, and even Oceana, 1,200 to 1,400 yeah. passengers. So. so the Haven and the Retreat, that's kind of that's the kind of the ships within ships promotion that Norwegian and Celebrity are running. And everybody um, likes them. They love them. But they yeah. just don't like the fact that they're on a big ship. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Probably a great option though, if you're going multi generational, or grandpa, grandpa, and grandpa can afford the yeah. can afford the suite, but they want to bring they want to bring the grandchildren and the kids along, and they can be on other parts of the ship. Plus the fact that there's more to do. That makes yeah, sense. It, it, that, that's true. That's you're getting your luxury, and then yeah. you can have everybody. And that's the great thing about multi generational cruises because every pocketbook can be accommodated on the cruise. Whereas if you try to if you try to pick out a resort or a, a ski lodge or someplace where you're going to take the whole family, everybody's got to pay that resort fee or that yeah. price, and you don't have the ability to change. So another thing that we're seeing, Larry, is and well, let me let me ask you a question: How many cruises have you been? on in the last we'll say 18 months uh uh 12 i believe 12 so, okay yeah in so another big trend that appears to be getting even more of a uh, uplift in 23 is the use of onboard technology how are you finding that oh my god i tell you we were just on the uh inaugural for the beyond and that's celebrity's new ship in yeah. um the edge category they uh were the first ship to get starlink and uh i don't are you familiar with starlink no tell us about it okay we're very familiar with it here at Port Canaveral, uh, Melbourne, because uh, Elon Musk uh, about once a week shoots up 60 satellites up in the air. Oh, right. Yes. The Starlink satellite system. Yeah. He has okay. over 6,000 satellites up there yeah. right now. Uh, Royal Caribbean and Celebrity are putting it on board their ships. And Starlink is the most phenomenal thing I've ever seen. It It is 10 times faster than what you and I are using right now. Uh, and it streams just like you and I are doing right now. But when you, when you put a page in, it instantly appears on your phone it doesn't upload it doesn't wait for a, a section or a section or, or a, i mean it just it's there it's like that and the price is about a quarter of what it was when we just had wi-fi and wow this is incredible it's going to revolutionize travel not only that though in terms of technology they've even revolutionized the, the way you you board the ship and you do your documents now right right and how you get off the ship is even is, is even cooler now first of all for embarkation what we do for most of the cruise lines now is we we get the app there's an app for that uh and you you go online and the first thing you do is you scan your passport and, and all your information pops up right there and they've got your all your passport information you take a picture and that's going to be your security photo while you're on board the cruise and so that means that when you get to the terminal all your key cards are actually at your stateroom you don't have to wait for somebody to go running around go through all the little things and come up with the key card if if it's required when we had to show our vaccine cards those were uploaded then when you get on board the ship, you do your safety briefing yourself by watching a video while you're on, on your phone. Then you go down to the muster station so you know where it's at and they check you off and that's it. And the beauty of that, Ken, is we don't have to shut down the whole ship's operations to have a muster drill. And yeah. And 5,000 people don't have to crowd onto one deck that would yeah. normally <laughs> there would normally be 5,000 people on 16 decks and they're all on one deck yeah. or two. So that is so much better. And, and so we don't have to shut down the bars, the restaurants, everything for the, for the mustard. Much drink. better experience. Yeah, Much better but the disembarkation, we have this new, and this is part of when you take that picture, and they have these terminals, and we don't fill out a customs form, any, at least the U.S., we don't fill out a customs form. Any. When you get off, you walk up to the machine, and you look at it like this, and the machine turns green, and you walk out of the terminal. That's it. No customs officials, no nothing. And it, it has just revolutionized disembarkation. We were on um, the uh, Wonder of the Seas a few weeks ago. From the time we left the cabin until we were standing in the parking lot, was less than 12 minutes you know that's amazing they've really done a fantastic job with yeah, that really, and that's facial recognition and we're going to see be seeing more but uh, princess has the armbands disney has the armbands now also you have your phones they're very few uh they don't put the compass or the little daily program in your cabin anymore it's all on the app so all on your app what are you looking forward to in new ships for next year <laughs> well uh I'll tell you something, maybe next, not next year, but what I'm really looking forward to is seeing what Disney's going to do with this ship that they bought from Jinting that they were in the middle of building out in Hong Kong. They had got it about halfway full and they were actually going to float it out to India and just scrap it. And they had already spent a billion dollars on it. And uh, Disney came in and said, well, instead of scrapping that, we're going to buy this. And, uh, and it's a huge ship. It's uh, 6,000 passenger capacity. So it's going to be really interesting wow. to see what Disney does with that ship because it's so much bigger than anything they've ever done before. Yeah. And uh, with that much space, you give Disney that much space on a cruise ship, it's going to be pretty interesting uh, what's going to be happening. And the other ship, I guess we won't see until 20 
2024 that we're anticipating is the icon from Royal Caribbean. I've heard of her. The icon looks like they took Coco K and put it on a ship. I mean, they put like, there must be 20 water slides on there. Oh, by the way, speaking of trends, Coco K, uh, the private island for Royal Caribbean, really come a long ways. It's it's, it's a, quite an experience now. Um, uh, you no longer tender there. We have a pier. We can put two ships in there. They've uh, expanded out the facilities. They're, they're building a whole new beach on top of what they already have now. They put a lot of money into this uh, Coco K. So you'll see a lot of Royal Caribbean cruises in the Caribbean that, that are called Coco K Adventures, and that's the reason because they're going to be spending a day at, the, at that private island, and it, it's really a lot of fun. Their ships are more of a destination than they are, are a ship to get you from point A to point B. That's a great point, Ken. Yeah. What are you seeing in terms of like, I just turned 39, <laughs> but what do you... <laughs> So for the so for the young at heart, what do, what are we seeing that the cruise lines are doing for the younger generation? Well, the slides and the water uh, part, the wonder of the seas. It has a free fall grab. It's not water. It's a gravity slide. It falls ten stories. <laughs> yeah, I mean it falls. It's there's no. I mean it just <laughs> and uh, that thing is quite something. And then I'm just trying. I was counting in my mind all the slides that they put on board. Uh, another trend, Ken, that we're seeing is the alternative dining is getting better. It's getting more diverse. Um, One of the Seas added Royal added a seafood restaurant on board the One of the Seas, which is quite good. Whereas we traditionally had like steakhouses and, and you know really upper uh, meals we're seeing more family oriented type of specialty restaurants on board the ships yeah and, i also uh, heard like, there's a tr- trend towards um eating healthy as well Are yeah you- True. Very true. Yeah. And now the menus are a lot smaller than they were pre-COVID, uh, okay. but there's less waste. And I think the uh, portions are smaller now. I mean, you can have as much as you want. So if you don't have enough, but I think that's good because you don't see near as much food waste as we use, we saw pre-COVID. Yeah. So I think that's a good trend. We're seeing less uh, attention to the main dining room. The new celebrity ships really don't have a main dining room. You go, it's a Disney style where you go f- to four different specialty restaurants during your cruise um that's the way disney does the rotational dining so that's that's another trend we're seeing the main dining room is kind of is fading and uh, less and less people are, are using it i think all in all the industry looks really healthy the uh on board the one of the seas we had 6200 6287 on board so uh at least in the caribbean we're sailing very full europe is continuing to to be around 50 percent capacity so that's still if you're thinking about going to europe i think this is going to be the year to go our river cruises are coming back but they're they're selling out very fast also a lot more boats this year on the rivers than we've had before there's more opportunities that's basically what the way i see it europe for 23 would be a good good bet because the pricing is still a little bit soft because of capacity yep it is. And and then, of course, Alaska. If you, if you have any inkling of wanting to go to Alaska, call your travel advisor right away and um, and get started and, and get that done. Okay. I guess another trend, Ken, is being able to book air, air flights with the cruise lines as much as a year in advance. And the beauty of it is, and they yet even now allow us to do seat selection. So you can, um, I, I've been booking Alaska cruises this week. We go in and we get the air we get the seats, but we don't have to pay for it until just before 30 or 60 days before the cruise. So they're allowing us to book the air. And if we went to the airline to do that or to one of our consolidators, we'd have yeah. to pay for it immediately and it would be non-refundable. Exactly. Uh, That's yeah. a big thing. It's huge. It's it's yeah. really, and because it allows us to book early to get lower fares and not have to come up with the money. And then even now to get seats, because that was the other problem we were having was the, the, the flights booked up and then you couldn't get seats together. So And plus the, the, plus the cruise lines with their buying power, I would expect probably have um, access to better air contracts. Yeah, we're seeing roughly 30% less than what if I go on this, if I book a, with a cruise line and then I go to Delta site, it's roughly 30% less and I don't have to pay for it immediately. Plus, I can cancel it or change it anytime prior to final payment. So, wow. Yeah, it's really that's incredible. a lot of flexibility, Larry. It really is. And so it really allows us as travel advisors, it's well, one stop when you come in to see me and yeah. you're going to Alaska, let's say in August, we can sit here, we can do the cabin, we can uh, make the deposit, we can pick our air. A lot of times we can even do our excursions and we can do that all in the first meeting. That used to take two or three meetings to get all that done. The other thing that came across my desk and we're seeing it a lot is expedition cruising. 
Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Well, again, uh, big increases in capacity. Uh, almost every cruise line has either added one or two ships down to either Galapagos or Antarctica. Again, mobility is going to be an issue on that. And, uh, and so if folks are thinking about those destinations, I encourage people to go ahead and do it while you're young. <laughs> because uh, I have so many people that come in and say, uh, you know, I really want to go to Antarctica, but now I, you know, I have to have a walker or whatever, and it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. So, but, but the um, uh, expedition and again, another cruise that you want to book early, because those are small ships. I mean, they only hold yeah. uh, two or 300 people and some in Galapagos only 150 people. So you yeah. really want to get booked up on those right away. But the good news is capacity is way up and that keeps prices down. And um, there's some exciting new ships out there too. Oh yeah, with well, some of the designs that they've come up with uh, yeah. Silver Sea, uh, their expeditions, which is actually like a floating laboratory. You actually yeah. work with scientists. You actually do experiments. Uh, we cruised Antarctica a few years ago, and I have to tell you, that's a it's a life changing experience. It really is. It's uh, it, it's similar to I think what you found in Egypt. Egypt yeah. really changes you. Uh, yeah changes your whole perception of things and that's the way antarctica is and so if, if anybody has any thought about doing that i i, I highly recommend antarctica and do it sooner rather than later because time's Absolutely. ticking yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you anything else on your on your list uh i guess the other thing that we are uh experiencing and that's creating your own shore excursion it's not as expensive as people think uh we, we use an outfit called tours by locals Mm -hmm. And uh, they are wonderful. It's retired professors, college students, and the people are from that town. Uh, for instance, I have some clients that are going to Barcelona this summer, and they wanted to go up to Montserrat, but they didn't want to pile in a 54-passenger bus and right. you know wait for everybody. So we got them a private guide who's going to pick them up at the ship who uh, in a Mercedes van and is going to spend the day with them. And, and they can design the tour, whatever they want, when they want to go to lunch, where they want to go to lunch. If they get tired, they can come back to the ship. And the whole thing is less than uh, $800 for two people. It, it's And I've seen a big trend of curating your own shore excursions using private uh, guides and private uh, facilities. And so we're creating a whole list of vendors where we're out looking for vendors who do that sort of thing. And it's just not near as expensive as what people thought, thought it would be. It can certainly add to the value of your, your vacation. It really does. And yeah. uh, the, the great thing is it's because you design everything. The value, the value of a small group when on an excursion, you just can't say enough about it because it gives a much, a much nicer experience. And you're right, Ken, even if you're like 12, 14 people, and yeah. a lot of the times the tour price is set for just the tour, and the more people you add, it brings the price down. And some of these tours by locals, you can bring the price down to less than $100 a person. Well, Larry, this has been absolutely great. If folks would like to reach out to you about an Alaska cruise or another cruise adventure for 2023, what's the best way to get hold of you? The best way is go to our website, uh, justcruisingviera.com. Distance is not a problem. So no matter where you live, we, we can accommodate and, and we'll be able to share our expertise with you and take care of you. So if you go to our website, justcruisingviera.com, uh, all the information is there and you can contact us. And, and we do answer the phone. We return phone calls and we return emails. So, uh, okay. And your phone number is? Phone, <laughs> phone, number. The phone number is 321 two four two one three three one in the united states and your cell phone works really good and you won't get charged for it so perfect perfect where are you off to next year well let's see uh in february we're going on seaborne i've been after 19 years 135 cruises i've never been on seaborne so i'm really looking forward to this and then we're going uh back on region seven seas in, in june we're going from stockholm to copenhagen through uh the norway and all of northern europe we haven't been on region seven seas in probably 15 years so it's going to be very interesting and we'd like to do this to see how the cruise lines are doing and make sure they're staying up to par what we expect from them and uh, then we're going to, on azamara in august and one of the beauties that one of the things that azamara Mara does it's really neat is they do a country cruise and our cruise is all going to be in the country of ireland so we've spent 11 days cruising around ireland so it's ireland intensive ireland intensive if you like that sort of travel you really need to look at azamara they do a bang up job oh super well my friend that's great with that i'm just going to wish you safe and happy cruising may the okay. wind always be at your back and i hope to see you on the lido deck real soon Boy, I would love that, Ken. Let's do that. <laughs> All right. Take care, Larry.
Thank you so much, Ken. Appreciate it. And that about wraps things up for today, folks. A very special thanks to my guest, Larry Jackson of Cruise Holidays of Vieira. If you'd like to reach Larry, I will leave his contact information in the description. If you'd like to reach us, you can send a question to questions at realtravelexperts.com. Visit our website, realtravelexperts.com, or simply leave a comment. We always respond. And as always, folks, if you enjoyed this content, a like, subscribe, and a ring of the bell is certainly appreciated and helps us to spread the word. So until next time, happy travels. <laughs>